my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming my April TBR which is very exciting to me because April is my birth month and so I just get very excited for all things spring and April because I am a spring baby. My birthday is on April 26th and I'm going to be 26 this year so I can't believe it but it's happening. <laughs> um, 25 didn't feel real because 2020 was just like a whole pandemic so I don't know but anyways lately I have been reading like a lot of different things like a lot of fantasy romance which are like more indie published a lot of like rom-coms and like more like romance novels like erotica novels on my kindle and I have just been craving like a return to my roots to the YA fantasies that I love and so I have planned out my April TBR with books that I think I'm just gonna absolutely love and adore for my birth month TBR <laughs> And I'm so excited to talk about them. And so let's just dive right into all the books that I want to read in April. I also have a few buddy reads planned, which I'm just so excited about because I love reading with friends. The first, the first book that I'll be reading in April is going to be Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. If you don't know, this is literally one of my favorite books of all time. I read it twice in 2019 when I first read it because I was absolutely so in love with it. And also if you didn't know, Margaret Rogerson just announced her next book, which I'll put a picture of it here. It's called Vesper Teens. I'm so excited for it. And so I was talking to my lovely friend Yasmin. We were talking about how excited we were for the book and how much we adore Sorcery of Thorns. And we're like, why don't we just buddy read Sorcery of Thorns together and do a reread? And so we're going to do a reread. And I'm so excited because I, there's just something about rereading your favorite books and getting to experience them again that I just absolutely adore. And I just felt like it's time to give this one a reread because it's my absolute favorite of all time. And I mean, this cover is it's literally... Oh, I just love this book so much. All sorcerers are evil. Elizabeth has grown up in Ostermere's great libraries, and so she has known this to be a truth her entire life. She guards the kingdom against grimoires, which are magical spell books that have taken on a life of their own. If provoked, the grimoires will transform into grotesque monsters and terrorize everyone. Elizabeth hopes to become a warden, charged with protecting everyone from the evils that these grimoires possess. Then an act of sabotage releases the library's most dangerous grimoire and Elizabeth is framed for the crime. Elizabeth is torn from her home in the great library and sent to the capital in order to face justice. With no one to turn to but her sworn enemy, Nathaniel Thorne, and his mysterious demonic servant, she finds herself entangled in a centuries-old conspiracy. As her alliance with Nathaniel grows, Elizabeth starts to question everything she's been taught her entire life. About sorcerers, about the library she loves, and about herself. For Elizabeth has a power she could have never guessed and a future she could have never imagined. Oh my god, just even talking about the summary of this book makes me so excited to reread it and I'm so excited for me and Yasmin to have such a great time rereading this together, especially because we both already read it and loved it and it's just going to be a beautiful time. Then I'll put this one out here. Yeah, I also have this Elkray version that's the next book is also a buddy read and that's going to be Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. Also a reread and I'm going to be rereading this with M from Perfect Paperbacks and this is going to be her first time reading the book so I'm so excited to see all of her reactions the first time that she rereads it. Oh my god, just holding this book makes me so excited to reread it. Oh my god, I am like literal certified Shadowhunters trash. I just absolutely live for everything in the Shadowhunters world and Chain of Gold was just such a good book and I wasn't going to reread it before I read Chain of Iron but I was like, I think I need to. <laughs> it's just like, I feel like I can experience these books over and over again and not get tired of them. I just, I love them so much. Chain of Gold takes place in Edwardian London which is the early 1900s and it follows the children of the cast from the Infernal Devices which is Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, and Clockwork Princess which those books literally were like my everything when I read them. They still are. But now like these books, like, I don't know. It's just like, I feel like I have such a strong connection to the Shadowhunters because I literally started reading those books when I was 14 and I grew up with them. Like as all of the characters in that world got older, like in the original cast got older, like I got older with them. So I just like get very sentimental. So here is Chain of Gold and this is the first press edition. So it has these beautiful illustrations of all of the characters by Cassandra Jean. And the other day, Cassandra Clare released the Whispering Room scene between James and Cordelia from 
James's perspective and I read it and it doesn't even work so I to read this. Okay, so an inheritance of shadows, a love in chains, an unconquerable foe. And what's really interesting is Cassandra Clare pulls a lot of her themes from classics. So this one is pulled from Great Expectations and she says she doesn't like do retellings or anything like that, but she pulls the important themes and incorporates them into the book. So like chapter headings or like in the Dark Artifices series, the inspiration was from Edgar Allan Poe's poems. So like the titles of the chapters were from his poems or in, in Infernal Devices, the inspiration was Tale of Two Cities. The more you know, I just thought that that was just a really cool way to incorporate a classic without making it like a retelling or anything like that. But just using the important themes and referencing them subtly. Like the, the last hours and like Chain of Gold, Chain of Iron, Chain of Thorns. I think those titles are pulled from Great Expectations, like a quote of some sort. Cordelia Carstairs is a shadow hunter and has been raised that way since birth. When her father is accused of a terrible crime, her and her brother and her mother relocate to London in hopes of preventing the family's ruin. And in order to do that, Cordelia must marry. However, Cordelia is determined to be a hero rather than a bride. Soon Cordelia encounters her childhood friends, James and Lucy Herondell, and they reunite. She is drawn into their glittering world of ballrooms and the London Institute and the Shadowhunter world in a time of relative peace. All the while she must hide her secret love for James, who is sworn to marry someone else. Cordelia's new life is blown apart, however, when a series of shocking demon attacks rocks the London Shadowhunter community. These monsters are unlike anything the Shadowhunters have ever faced before. They can walk in the daylight and they seem to attack without reason. London is immediately quarantined, which I just find funny that this book came out literally in the start of quarantine. Like Cassandra Clare had no way of knowing the timing, but Anyways, <laughs> trapped in the city, Cordelia and her friends discover that a dark legacy has gifted them with incredible powers, but now they must make a choice. Uh, everything about this book is just incredible. Like, I just love it so much. Like I just admire all the characters. Cassandra Clare has such a talent for making so many different and unique characters, and the storyline is always fresh. Otherwise, like I wouldn't be 20 books in and like still committed to this series. So I just absolutely adore it with my whole heart and I'm so excited to reread and especially have a buddy read and like just see someone's reactions to reading it for the first time. It's gonna be amazing. So then of course after rereading Chain of Gold, I'll be moving on to Chain of Iron. Oh my god, this book. Uh, it's signed. Uh, I love how Cassandra Clare's signature is just like C line, C line. Probably because she's had to sign so many things. Like I don't blame her. And this is apparently Lucy on the cover by the way. The first one was Cordelia on the cover. This is Lucy on the cover. And these are moths coming out of her hair. I love the cover designs for the Shadowhunter series. I just like love, like, I don't know, they're just, ugh, they're all just so good. So yeah, this is the continuation of the Last Hour series. This is the middle book, and I'm sure it's going to pack an emotional punch because Chain of Gold ended off on a big cliffhanger. I've heard this is like a big emotional cliffhanger. I mean, I'm just... I love everything Shadowhunters. I get so excited for when it's time to read more Shadowhunters, so I just absolutely cannot wait to read this. Hello, I'm popping back on to add another book into my DVR because apparently I didn't already have enough, and I just wanted to talk about one last buddy read that I will be doing, and that is going to be A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair, and it's gonna be a buddy read with Maddie over at Princess of Paperback. We kept saying we would buddy read stuff over the last few months, and then we ended up not buddy reading it, but this one we are going to buddy read, and this is a fantasy romance, Hades ex Persephone retelling, and so Persephone has been the goddess of spring her whole life, but that's only a title as the flowers shrivel at her touch, and she has moved to New Athens in order to try and start a new life for herself, blending in as a mortal journalist. Hades, god of the dead, has built a gambling empire in the mortal world, and his favorite bets are rumored to be impossible. After a chance encounter with Hades, Persephone finds herself in a contract with the god of the dead that seems almost impossible. Persephone must create life in the underworld or lose her freedom forever. So this just seems like it's gonna be addicting and fun, and I love Greek mythology retellings, especially Hades and Persephone. It's just such a fun myth to always see retellings of. Like, I love the Lower Olympus comic, which is a Hades and Persephone retelling as well, which by the way, that is getting a published book and I'm so excited. And I've been reading that webtoon for like three years at this point, so I love it a lot. And yeah, I just wanted to add this extra little bit in because I forgot to put it in when I was actually filming the other day. 
Okay, then the next book, because I'm obviously setting myself up to read a lot of emotional books this month, it is time to read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Um, I am a V.E. Schwab stan. I literally love her. She's my queen. And I've like, I've met her multiple times. How many signings have I gone to for her? No, I think I just met her once. But I have like all my books by her sign and I just adore her and all of her works. I own mostly all of her books except for the, a few of them that obviously I will own one day. Like it's just a matter of time. And I, I've read, yeah, I've read mostly everything by her except some of her older works. Like The Near Witch and The Archive. I think are the only two that I haven't read. So like, anyways, I adore V. Schwab. And it's time. I figured my birthday month is the best month to read a book that I feel like will be my new favorite book. Just based on the things that I've heard and V.E. Schwab, like, I don't know. I just was so excited for this book because I've heard her talk about it for a long time. Going to signings and like watching videos of hers because I adore her. She's always talked about how she had the story in her head and she was working on it. I'm so excited. It is about Addie LaRue who makes a deal with the devil essentially in order to kind of like escape the expectations that females have in the 1700s in france where she is born she makes a deal with the devil and she will live forever however she's cursed that everyone that she meets will forget her name and so no one will remember her and it says a life no one will remember a story you will never forget and i've heard from isabella over at throat of pages that this book is literally like going to change my life and it's going to rip my heart out it's one of isabella's new favorite books and i even though I just love the Schwab, so. And it, the quote at the top is, never pray to the gods that answer after dark. And every year on her birthday, the devil that she made the deal with comes to visit her to see if she's ready to like give up her immortality yet. I don't know. I just have like such good feelings. And now that the weather's getting nice, I can sit outside and read this and just like fully absorb it and love every moment of it. I'm so excited to like annotate it and put all of my thoughts into this book and the exclusive editions just dropped the barnes and noble one and then the regular exclusive one i bought both of them i haven't even read this book yet but that's just how much i love you well. so yes i'm so so excited about this i cannot wait oh my god the next book on my tbr will be for the end of the month and that is crown of gilded bones by jeffrey l armentrout this is the third book in the from blood and ash series which consists of from blood and ash and kingdom of flesh and fire I was considering rereading these books before reading the third one, but I kind of decided since there's going to be a fourth book in the series, I'll wait until right before the last book and then reread all of them just because I had other things that I wanted to read this month. But I wanted to read Crown of Gilded Bones like as soon as it came out. So that's my thought process. Um, so From Blood Nash follows Poppy and she lives in this kingdom where she is the maiden and so she is not to be seen, not to be heard, not to be touched, not to experience pleasure. And she lives this very guarded life because she is supposed to be this untouched pure maiden but the maiden has a heart and a soul and she wants to feel and experience things she would rather be out on the ramparts with the guards defending the kingdom than just sitting around idly so enter hawk a golden-eyed guard who riles her up and makes her question everything that she's ever believed in he incites her anger and makes her question her whole life. A fallen kingdom is rising once again, determined to take back what they believe is theirs. And as the shadow of those that are cursed draws closer, the line between what is forbidden and what is right becomes blurred. You know me, I love From Blood and Ash with my whole heart. It was my favorite book of 2020. And I am, of course, just so excited for the next one in the series. I just, the second book ended on like such a cliffhanger. The first three chapters of Crown of Guild of Bones are out, but I'm going to wait and just like go into the book fresh. So I'm so excited. I'm so excited. The next book that I want to read is a book that I don't own yet, but I have just been hearing such great things from M, but also just from BookTube in general, and that is Crier's War by Nina Varela, and this cover is just so pretty. I was literally going to buy it yesterday at Barnes & Noble. Like, I was determined to find it, and then they didn't have it, which is just so sad. The little slogan, or the tagline, I don't know what officially you call it, says, One mortal, one maid, one loved, one betrayed. So this is a story about impossible love between two girls, one maid, one mortal. After the War of Kinds ravaged the kingdom of Rabu, the Otome, designed by humans, 
to be the playthings of royals, took over the estates of their owners and beat the human race to their wills. Now, Isla, a human servant rising in the ranks at the House of Sovereign, dreams of avenging the death of her family by killing Sovereign's daughter, Lady Cryer. Cryer was made to be beautiful, and to be flawless, and to take over the work of her father. Cryer was preparing to take over for her father, but that was before she was betrothed to someone that seemed to house a million secrets, before she discovered that her father may not be as benevolent as she thought, and before she met Isla. I mean, ugh, I just love the cover. It's so pretty. I literally want to own this book so badly. And I don't know why, this grabbed my attention when it first came out last year, and then I kind of like didn't care about it for a while. And now like just hearing my friend talk about it makes me want to read it so badly. And this is just like a random interlude, but I think that we really like as a community need to acknowledge how much power we hold in word of mouth advertising for books across all book social media platforms. Like, I'm sure that there are plenty of people watching this video that have maybe read a book because of me, which is just like weird because I'm just here like in my apartment talking about books, but I have an influence to promote these books. And so I don't know. It's kind of cool when you think about it and it just makes me happy that we can help out these authors that have written these amazing stories. Okay, next is going to be the book that I'm going to read on audio in April. And yes, I go through audiobooks very slowly because I don't always have time to listen to them and I like to listen to music a lot. So I don't, I will usually pick music over audiobooks unless I'm like on a walk or something like that. Like if I'm just doing chores around the house, I usually will listen to music. So that's just life. Like I don't listen to a lot of audiobooks, but I do like to try and like have one going throughout the month. Like I'll listen to it while I grocery shop. That's a great time to listen. Or like sometimes when I do chores, but mostly when I take my dog on a walk, great time to listen to an audiobook. And I have been rereading books via audio more often because I find that like I don't have to pay attention to the finer details because I already have a good grasp on the world, but I get to re-experience the story in a new way. So I'll be rereading a book in preparation for the sequel that is coming out this Tuesday actually, but then I will hopefully read the sequel in May. And that is Bone Crier's Moon by Katherine Purdy. And this was one of my favorite books of 2020. I absolutely adored it. And I think this is going to be a duology. So I need to reread the first book before I read the second book. So this is based on the myth of La Dame Blanche, which is what Serpent and Dove is also based on, but it's really cool because these two books take completely different approaches to that myth. Bone Criers have a sacred duty to ferry the dead from the land of the living to the afterlife, but their power to ferry the dead comes from a ritual which requires great sacrifice. A Bone Crier must lure her true love to the bridge and then take his life in order to claim her power. Elise has been training since birth to become the next matriarch of the Bonecrier, but first she must complete her ritual and kill the boy that she is destined to love. Bastian's father was slain by a bone crier, and so he has made it his life's purpose to seek vengeance on the bone criers. But his vengeance comes too late. Elise's ritual has already begun, and now they are bound, and their fates are intertwined in life and in death. If one of them were to die before the ritual is complete, they will both die. Sabine has never had a stomach for bone crier's work, but when her best friend Elise is taken captive, she will do anything that she can to break the bond between Elise and Bastion before they all die. This is such a great book. I really think this is one of the best YA enemies to lovers because they literally want to kill each other for like more than half of the book. So to me, that's like great slow burn enemies to lovers where they are trying to one up and scheme and murder. So I adored this book the first time that I read it. I actually read it as an arc, which is why this copy is not annotated and I will be rereading it via audio. So I probably won't be annotating this one, but I'm just like, I just love this book. So I'm really excited to reread it. To round off my April reading, I have two rom-com arcs that I was sent by publishers and I will tell you about them. <laughs> so the first one is The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren and this is their newest romance novel. Christina Lauren is actually a pen name for a duo of writers and they write rom-coms. I've heard they're great. Um, the last book that they had that was a pretty big hit I think was The Unhoneymooners. They might have also had a holiday book out. I can't remember for sure. but. When I heard the plot of this, I knew I wanted to read it immediately, and so I reached out and I asked for a review copy, and here I am. And like, if you know me, I'm a, like I'm a scientist, so I like love sciencey things. So like the DNA, like I just love it. 
Single mom Jessica Davis is a data and statistics computer whiz. But no amount of number crunching can convince her to get back on the dating scene. She was raised by her grandparents who are now helping to raise her seven-year-old daughter, Juno. Jess has lived a life full of abandonment. Her father was never around. Her mother partied too hard to take care of her and her child's father decided that he did not want to be a part of Juno's life before she was even born. But then Jess hears about Genetic Ali, a new company that creates matchmaking pairs based on DNA results. And this Jess can understand numbers and science. At least she thought she did until she is matched with 98% compatibility to one of Genetic Ali's founders, Dr. River Pena, and she finds this to be completely unbelievable because she already knows Dr. Pena and he is a stuck up, stubborn man who is without a doubt not her soulmate. But Genetic Ali has a proposition get to know him and we'll pay you. Jess is in no position to turn down the money and so her and Dr. Pena are dragged from one event to another as the diamond match that could increase the company's valuation. Jess begins to realize that there may be more to the doctor than she initially thought and maybe we'll just believe in the science of a soulmate. This just seems like so cute and perfect and I love the science aspect of it. Hopefully it won't be like too inaccurate that I won't like it but I think I have high hopes have good expectations they seem to have gotten the dna structure look pretty okay on the cover so i'm good to go then the last book that i have for april is the secret bridesmaid by katie birchall which i actually just unboxed this yesterday so thankfully it came time for me to film my april tbr this one is out may 4th which this book is also at that day okay sorry so this one is on sale may 18th so i love this cover like i just feel like the cover girl has she's style you know and on the back it says, Matrimony meets mayhem in a modern romantic comedy from a charming new voice. When professional bridesmaid for hire, Sophie Breeze, says I do to planning the biggest wedding of the year for London's aristocracy. Can she keep the perfect day from tangling into the perfect disaster? And it is set amongst British high society and it celebrates the joys and foibles of marriage, the highs and lows of female friendship, and finding head over heels level when you least expect it. it just sounds cute and really fun and i love little rom-coms like this i also love the idea of someone being like a professional bridesmaid for hire it's just kind of cool so that is my tpr for april i'm so so excited about all these books please let me know down below what you are going to be reading in april leave a little birthday cake emoji if you made it this far since april's my birth month yes i like really like my birthday in case you can't tell but i'm just excited even though i'm getting old and <laughs> I am just really excited to be focusing this month on reading books that are going to make me happy. So that's all for now. Have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.